Now, it's all well and good thinking, oh, well, we can do this transformation, then followed by this transformation, then followed by this transformation, um, without there being consequences. Now, we've got to be very careful because we've got to think about, does a translation followed by a stretch, or if you do it the other way around, start with the stretch, then follow that up with the translation, does that make a difference? Does the order in which you choose to do the transformations make a difference? And that is what we've got to clear up. So by the end of this video, we want to know, does it make a difference? Yes or no? Okay. Now, what I've got here are three different transformations. I've got a translation by the vector 0, 2. I've got a stretch parallel to the x-axis factor 3 and a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, And what I'm going to do is instead of looking at a curve, I'm just going to choose a random point. Okay, So the point with coordinates 3, 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply these transformations to those coordinates, to that point. So first of all, we're going to start off by applying transformation A, then followed by transformation B. Okay? So, transformation A is going to translate uh, the point by the vector 0, 2. So it's going to move it up two units. So the new coordinates will be 3, 8. Okay? Then if I use transformation B, stretch parallel to the x-axis factor 3, then that point will stretch outward by factor 3, okay, and so its x-coordinate will be multiplied by 3, and we'll get 9, 8. Okay, so that is where the coordinates of the point 3, 6 get transformed to once you've done A, then B. How about then B, then A? So if I perform the stretch first, the x-coordinate will get multiplied by 3. The y-coordinate will stay the same. And then if I perform the translation by the vector 0, 2, that point will be moved two units up. And as we can see, these two coordinates are the same. So I've chosen a random coordinate. And once the uh, transformation is applied, both of them will uh, go to the same coordinates. So A and B are transformations that can work in either order. Okay? So, so far, from what we've explored, the transformation doesn't matter. Now, let's try A and C. Okay? So A, translation by the vector 0, 2. So we would then have 3, 8. Okay, moving it two units up. And then a reflection in the x-axis. So reflection in the x-axis um, will change the y-coordinate from 8 to minus 8. So we'd have 3 and minus 8. Okay? Now, if we perform the reflection first, we would get 3 minus 6. But then if we would perform the translation, that would move it up two units, which would be 3 minus 4. And clearly, these are different. So in the first case, the order of the transformations didn't make any difference. In the second example, they did. OK? Now, what could be causing this? OK, well, you should notice from the transformations that I've selected, this one, translation by 0, 2, only changes things in the y direction. That changes the y coordinate. B will only change the x coordinate. And C will only change the y coordinate. OK, so when I had a transformation where one was occurring just in the y direction and one was just in the x direction, okay, that, order-wise, didn't make any difference. But 
When I had two that were happening in the y direction, then suddenly the order does matter. Okay? So it is key that you see that actually if the two transformations are occurring in the same direction, they may well have an effect upon one another. Um, and the order may well matter. It doesn't mean that it necessarily will, okay? Um, because let's say you had a stretch parallel to the y-axis factor 2 and a stretch parallel to the y-axis factor 3. If you multiply the y-coordinate by 2 and then by 3, it's the same thing as multiplying it by 3 and then by 2. Okay? That wouldn't make a difference. They're both in, they're both in the y-direction, though. Okay? So it's if they are both in the y-direction, then they can make a difference in which order you're doing.